hello everyone and welcome back to my channel with myself Isabella thank you so much for joining me and for those of you that are new here my name is Isabella I'm a British graduate of the Vaganova Ballet Academy and then I went on to dance with the Michalowska Mikhailovsky Ballet and Eiffel Ballet as a soloist. So you guys loved the variation analysis of the different ballerinas and so of Odette variation and so now I thought we could analyze the Odile variation because obviously a lot of dancers may perform better in one role more so than the other. So for those that might be great in Odile, maybe they will not be so great in Odette or vice versa. And it's really the mark of a fantastic ballerina that can do so well in both and portray such nuance and differences in both roles. And so Let's start by watching Svetlana Zakharova. Now, some of the variations are different versions. So you'll notice some is the Marinsky version, um, you know, with the double attitude, and then some is where it's the um, double extend, hop, hop, hop. And with Svetlana Zakharova, who we're going to watch now, she's doing something different. I think it may be the La Scala version. But we're looking more so at the mood and artistic quality of the dancer because I think artistry is something that's not focused on enough in this day and age with young dancers and I think it's something that should be sort of a little bit more talked about and addressed because it's at the end of the day the thing that makes all these ballerinas we're watching so special. Of course the technique is very strong but the artistry is what makes them a star. So let's start with Svetlana Zaharova and look at how she portrays Odile. Remember, I really want your opinion at the end of this and keep your comments honest. Of course, we're allowed to debate what we think, but always keep it nice and kind and respect the artists that we're watching. Okay, let's start. I just think as well, she's just so beautiful, like a beautiful contrast of watching the others perform. Like immediately you see that she's special. Different version you don't see so much these days. I like it though. She has beautiful jumps. Of course we watched her Odette recently. And it was a very sort of innocent one. She looks much more confident here. Lovely arms as well, lovely wrists. But you see how she adds strength in her fingers a bit more. Really looks at the audience when she runs, it's nice. Amazing. You can see with Svetlana Zaharova like how beautiful that last attitude was, that pose at the end. I mean, that's a picture in itself. So it's really nice to see that, well, the music's so amazing as well. Like I love that variation simply for the change in dynamic of music and it really builds up as opposed to other variations. Much more intent with the audience. You know, notice how she runs. She really looks at the audience as she runs. And when she brings the arms down, in Odette, obviously, it was much, much softer. And this one, she adds sort of more fingers strong as she does it. So there's much more dynamic there, which adds this sort of Odile energy, which is really, really nice. She just really embodies and encompasses, you know, a swan. And um, I think she's a fantastic Odile. I think she has a lot of beautiful acting as well. And there's this sort of confidence and strength and sort of, you know, looking at the audience with these intentful eyes, you know. So she's really, really good. I really enjoyed that performance. And it's a version that you don't often see anymore right or well i think la scala does it but you don't really see that anywhere else um that music obviously is usually with the 
Hop, 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 and fuerte, and double. Uh, da, da, da. Which I think we're going to watch now with Olga Smirnova. So we'll watch Olga next. Now, last time we watched her Odette, we noticed that she looked a little bit, um, I don't know, I, I, maybe possibly nervous, but a little less mature than the others. But I think, as you guys commented, it was a little bit more down to lack of experience in the role. I'm sure if we watched her now, it would look much more mature and confident because, you know, she's developed since then, obviously, a lot as an artist. But I seem to remember watching this, her ordeal, that it already she looks more confident and potentially you know that gap between Odette which is over into Odile she's you know now relaxed and is excited to perform this role and there's less sort of nerves because she's been on stage quite a lot up to this point but anyway I won't say too much right now let's have a look at Olga. Beautifully confident. Again, a very beautiful woman as well, just looks so gorgeous. Her arms and neck are just so nice to watch. They seem to like it. <laughs> yeah, super nice, super nice. I think, oh my gosh, I like I love Olga so much. I love Olga so much. What I would want to see, if I was thinking about how I would portray it, obviously I love storytelling and I really love acting. Like when I was younger, acting was a second love of mine. At one point it was like, oh, acting or ballet, acting or ballet. For me, Odile is, you know, evil. She's very sly. And I would want to see that sort of character come through a little bit more. So in my opinion, even though, you know, Olga's beautiful, it's still a bit too nice. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? A bit too, like, friendly. Like, you know, she's smiling and it looks beautiful, but there's not that sort of evilness that I think, I think Marinella Nunes does quite well. I, I love Marinella Nunes because of her acting and I think she's very good at portraying a character. I think it's lacking a little bit of that slyness and a little bit of that, it's confident, but it's still evil, do you know what I mean? I'm almost like smizing through the eyes, you know, let me know if you can see what I mean. But it's a good contrast of her Odette. It's much stronger and um, it's definitely different. And in terms of the technique behind it, obviously, you know, we've all seen it where there's, you know, very, uh, amazing technicians, you know, stay up after the double, double stay, and ya da 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 da. There's something very satisfying about that. I think Olga does sometimes, at the moment, you know, struggle with the the sway back legs staying up. And I think if she could improve on that and work on that, that would just add a new layer of, of just, oh, wow. On the jumps on the end, the da 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 da, it almost, on the single double coupe jeté, Again, I slightly lose the character because it's she's probably tired at that point and is thinking a lot about the technique. So, you know, we sort of lose the face. And I would want to see the intent on the jump, you know, like even just lifting the chest a little bit more. So we just keep that dynamic and character alive. Because, you know, the, as I said, the music's building up and it's super exciting and you want to sustain that. So, yeah, I, I honestly, I love Olga. I think she's so beautiful. But I think there's a little bit for me lacking in the character and maintaining it and a bit more evil a bit more evil you know so it's a but again obviously I'm being very nitpicky but I think for me you know I'd want to see a bit more evilness come through so we're going to change versions now you know those versions were quite similar now we're going to look at Osipova who we also watched do Odette and for me her Odette was 
lacking a little bit of softness and for it wasn't quite embodying the Odette that I would want to see, you know, with the really relaxed wrist. I mean, we talked about it in the previous one. So let's see if her Odile comes through now. I, I suspect, I haven't watched this one, I suspect she's better at coming through with the Odile because of her sort of fiery um, nature, which is so natural to her. Okay, so let's have a look. Amazing pirouettes. I'm always amazed how she dances on these uh, tiny point shoes. You know, her, the toe of her shoe is so narrow. <laughs> Really important to use your back a lot on the renversé. She does that really nicely. Takes her time. Very musical, good. Really nice. Really nice, really nice. I mean, I thought she embodied the character really well there. It was really interesting to watch. Obviously, she's very technical and can do all the fast turns really well, but I think that's really suited to this variation. You know what she reminds me of a little bit sometimes is almost, um, almost an American dancer because she has this sort of slightly carefree way of dancing. You know, like when she lifts her leg, it's a real real kick and and then it's but it's full of energy it sort of reminds me a bit of uh, more of an american dancer whereas i don't think you'd see that kind of energy towards a sort of pure marinsky dance for example i mean we're about to watch le pack in now i've saved the purest of purest till the last because i think there's a, there's a huge difference now between the way osipova's dancing it and the way lapakin is dancing it the reason why again i'm i'm feeling that sort of american energy from osipova is it's it's more obvious and it's more exaggerated. But I thought the energy was, you know, fantastic, very, very light. And we definitely got a lot of the sort of confident, but slight slyness from her character. I would have liked, you know, at the very end and that final pose, instead of, instead of just going pum, I would have liked like a little bit more of an accent there or something. When we watched Lepakina, there's some key moments in there which I like some key nuances in there which I am absolutely in love with and I think just bring the variation to just new heights. Now she's not she's not as technical as Osipova or you know potentially some of the others like she's not doing as many pirouettes or anything but it's just the way she's using her upper body and artistry that for me just um, really draws me in and embodies the character so let's watch Lepakina now and I'm not I'm not exactly biased towards Lepakina but I've watched many many people perform this variation and so far I think Lepakina's is my favorite. You know, it's almost like if you were, if you were to meet Odile in real life and meet her at a party or something, like literally the party, some of the others would be like, hello, and I, I'm Odile, yes, I'm the best. Whereas Lepakina would be more like, 
yes, hello, I'm Odile. You know, just more subtle, but equally as engaging. So let's have a look. how she lifts her chin. Beautiful. And she adds a lot of stillness, which adds a lot of character. Intent with the eyes. I like this change, looking over her arms. Beautiful lift of the head, just very strong, proud. I do like how she shanays in fifth. I think it looks very nice. Nice eyes, eyes down. Beautiful. Oh, that head as well strength to the front it's just very thought about now how she finishes here as well with her shoulders just watch how she finishes with her shoulders that pause Ah, oh, so amazing. Just very pure, nothing over the top, but just really hits the nail on the head of the character. Yeah, beautiful. I could honestly watch that every day. Now, you know, some of you might disagree with me, but for me, she is just absolutely amazing. Obviously, again, she's done that role. At this point, when this was filmed, she's done it hundreds and hundreds of times. So she's developed it a lot over time. And even at the end, you know, some would say she even messed that up a little bit. Like it wasn't like a, it was, it's supposed to be, you know, double, double to lunge, but you know, she came out of it. But notice again, you can watch it back. It goes, pum, pum, like that. And that sort of pause between when her shoulders are up, and then head down, you know, the shoulders go down and then she lifts the chin. For me, it just makes me go, oh God, that's amazing. You know, just that nuance to it is just so incredible and so thought out. And when she steps to the arabesque, the head goes back and it's such a luxurious movement, you know, she's sort of really embodying what the music is doing. You know, the music is with that beautiful viola or violin and the head goes back and then suddenly it's paused to the front you know, so much strength, which makes it really come alive for me. Notice how, you know, there are many moments in that where she's standing completely still for a moment. Standing completely still within a variation and using those pauses is something that really brings a new layer of professionalism and maturity to it. So I often say to anyone who's doing a variation who I'm coaching, like, you don't have to be running around all the time. You know, it's really nice to be able to hold a pose for a second and then walk you know and have that sort of calmness about you which again exudes a lot of confidence. Lepatkina was much subtler than the others obviously the first two variations with um, Zaharova and Smirnova were different music altogether which adds a lot more strength. I'd kind of like to see I mean we're not going to anymore but it would have been interesting to see Lepatkina doing that variation and compare them or vice versa seeing the others do this one so maybe we will one day. If you do have any video links of Zaharova or Smirnova doing this version that Lepatkina is doing do leave it in the description because it would be really interesting to see so yeah as you can see let's just talk about Osipova and Lepakina how different they are 
but again both both fantastic but for me I prefer the subtler way that Le Pacino is exuding the role it's almost like Osipova is dramatic acting like you know well literally like it makes sense she's on a stage and it's more like Le Pacino is camera acting so it's more subtle as if we're picking up every tiny detail of what she's doing but I still think you know obviously you'd be able to see that within the theatre but from all of them what they're all doing so well is the intent with the eyes and and looking at the audience and it's that slight lean forward which adds intensity you know whether you're looking down at your feet or when you're running around and then the Ronvers say you know it's just much prouder than Odette. Odette is much softer and there's a lot of there's a lot of looking down more you know rather than and looking out rather than forwards and up you know so there's differences and it's amazing what use of use of head upper body and epilmon can do to change the mood completely of the dancer and what you're trying to portray i really like a lot of them i like all of them my favorite is going to be lapakina you know my favorite was her odette as well but i really do think she's worked over many 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 years to perfect this role and to make it her own and so I'm sure the others and a lot of younger dancers like who we've spoken about recently Maria Ilushkina I think you know she could come up and really start to bring this role to life as Lepatkina did so it'd be really interesting to see some younger dancers develop. I'd love to know who your favourite Odile is. Obviously we've addressed a few ballerinas here but there are many many others. I've kept it as the Russian ballerinas for now just because that's what we've been looking at but um, if there's any of your favourite Odiles that aren't from a, um, a Russian trained background let me know down below as I'd love to know. But guys thank you so much. Leave your comments and there's much more coming in 2023 so I really appreciate the support I really appreciate how my channel is growing and you're all enjoying it because I'm here to really sort of discuss things educate and really you know build everybody up as artists and also help you guys on your journey to becoming a dancer or whether you're just a dance enthusiast you know really talking about things and enjoying that so thank you so much and see you very soon bye for now